Today's video is all about bringing Grandma back into the kitchen. You know, the kitchen of the good old days. And this is my preserving kitchen. kitchen. You know, no matter how big your house is, you always seem to spend your time in one area. I never quite could understand big houses because how much space does a person really need? Well, let me tell you what today is a busy day and it's been a long time since I had a vlog, but I have so many things that I'm doing today, it's just easier to make it this way. So I'm working on making tomato juice. I'm canning green beans, <sighs> lots of cleaning. It seems like I always have so much cleaning to do in the kitchen because my kitchen is always a food processing center. So you can think of it like a restaurant. There's always food that's just been harvested. There's food that I'm starting to preserve. <sighs> the summertime is really big into all of this food production and all this food harvesting and all this food preserving and so you're just gonna follow along with me today that's the only thing I can do is just to have you come along with me and just see what I'm working on day to day I really wish YouTube would allow more music and allow things because it's nice to for you to hear what I'm hearing <laughs> oftentimes when I'm working in the kitchen I will listen to uh, Charles Stanley I really like uh, Pastor Charles Stanley I will listen to some of the pastors from the 18, 1900s. I really, really enjoy the revivals of the 1800s, the tent revivals of the old um, Reformation and all the revivals that happened in the 1800s and in the 1900s. So that's what I really listen to. Unfortunately, I can't play it. So what I have right here is, this is my steamer. And I really like this. I have wanted this now for 10 years, and last year I was able to buy it. So what it is, it steams. You can steam apples, pears, grapes. Today I'm doing my tomato juice. All you do is, I'll show you how it works. It isn't that expensive, and it's stainless steel, so it should last a long time. What I have in here are my tomatoes cut up, and this is homegrown celery. Now it looks like parsley but it is celery but the stalks never form very well but it's a little bit like the broadleaf parsley but it has a real celery um, scent to it so I have that in I'm going to have to use some dried onions because I don't have any onions right now put a little bit of garlic powder in it what I would do is I'll add two teaspoons of lemon juice per quart and I've got to put this in quarts. I was going to do it in pints, but quarts is something I'm going to really need because I use this tomato juice for making my vegetable soup and canning it, which will be later in the year. Um, so I think it's not going to give that many because these tomatoes are the plum tomatoes. So they're not very good for juicing, but this is what I have and this is what I'll use. So hopefully I can get, hopefully I can get two quarts out of this, or three at least. Alright, they're starting to cook down just a little bit. I wonder how much juice I have. Alright, so it's cooking down just a little bit. We're going to keep it cooking down. This isn't for drinking, this is for making vegetable soup. So, I just need some really good tomato juice for that. And it doesn't matter to me if it's a little thick. So. I'm going to keep cooking it down. It takes a couple hours actually to get it cooked down. Whenever I have things like tin cans, I've begun to save them. And I can't wait to share with you what I'm going to be working on. I have to wait till it comes in the mail, but it's going to be neat. It's going to be using these big number 10 cans for something really unique. And to not throw much away these days. So I'm really trying to use things that you can repurpose. So I gathered my eggs in this tin can yesterday. I know a lot of people set their eggs out and leave them out, but I wash all my eggs and put them away. Okay. 
all of my chickens lay their eggs now, so I have enough eggs to feed my whole family. I'm really spoiled because they're used to my eggs, and grown eggs are so much better than store-bought ones. <laughs> Now I'm going to be filling up my jars with green beans. I guess I'm just going to can these plain. I normally use Lipton onion soup mix and if you didn't see it, I have a video on it and I will share it with you guys at the end of this video. Like I said, every year I do the same things over and over again. So it's really not proper to just have a video always the same thing year after year. So I'm trying new ways of sharing with you what I do on a daily basis that is a little different. Now I normally do my green beans in pints but today I thought you know what let's just do them in quarts it's a lot easier that way. And then of course these get pressure canned for 30 minutes at 10 pounds pressure, and that's for my altitude. It's hard to believe this Saturday is food pantry day. And I'm going to go once again and see if there's any food left that's going to be thrown away, and I will glean it. So, I really want to get my work done this week so I'm not so swamped with so much work because you never know what they're going to have. Now, this time they might not have anything, but who knows? This is actually giving me pretty many green beans. This is still my original green bean patch that the deer first ate. Then I went and got that light. Oh my word, that light works amazing. The deer have not touched it since. For $15, that light Sure did save me a lot. It's called a predator light. I don't like about modern conveniences and fast food restaurants and things like that. The kitchen used to be a hub of excitement. It used to be a place where people gathered. Sadly, very few people eat meals at the table anymore. You know, before there was TV, there was radio and people would after their meals would sit by the radio together and listen. Then soon came the TV and that TV just really industrialized everything. People no longer sat at the kitchen table they sat while watching TV while they ate. I find that really sad. My kitchen is what I call a preserving kitchen. Everything I do in my kitchen has to do with food and cooking and preserving. So my tomato juice is finished, my green beans are finished, and I have to pick some more this week. Now I can wash these jars and put them on my pantry. There's so much about my kitchen that I wonder the people who lived here before me what they would think of it. The very first owners of this home were elderly people and after the husband passed away the wife moved out to Florida. The second owners of this mobile home was an elderly gentleman and his wife. He passed away and she did here at this mobile home. It was said that the gentleman loved this this property and I think he would be really pleased to see what I've done with it. You know our properties, they have a history. There's character in the properties, especially ones that are very old. And you often wonder about the lives of the people who lived in these properties before us. I like to think that I turned a dilapidated property into something that it was meant to be. He had cancer a very long time and by the time he died this property was unlivable. I think he would be pleased to see that I put love into this property. It's not about where you live, how you live, with what you got. 
there are always going to be people that have more money than you. And there's always going to be people that are poorer than you. We need to enjoy the things that we have in life and make the best of it, no matter where we live. I think that we should embrace modern ways of living, but I think we should also never forget the traditional things in our life and never forget the values and never forget the memories and never forget what it was like, the way of life, when life was a slower pace. <sighs> Take care, everyone. We'll see you guys tomorrow.